Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahillahi rabbil alamin wassalatu wassalamu ala asyrafil anbiya'i wal mursalin sayyidina wa habibina wa syafi'ina wa nuri qulubina wa qurrati a'yunina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa fi kulli lahadatin abada ala ni'amillahi wa fadlihi Allahumma atina min Allahumma atina min ladunka rahmah wa 'allimna min ladunka 'ilma subhanaka la 'ilma lana إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نوينا تعلم وتعنيم وتذكر وتذكر والنفع والانتفاع والفادة والاستفادة والحث على تمسك بكتاب الله وسنة رسوله صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم ودعاء إلى الخدى ودلالة على الخير يبتغى وجه الله ومرضاته وقربه وتوابه سبحانه وتعالى برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم إن نسألك العلم لدني وما شبع صافي الهاني وهاب يا غني اللهم إن نسألك العلم لدني وما شبع صافي الهاني يا وهاب يا غني اللهم إن نسألك العلم لدني وما شبع صافي الهاني يا وهاب يا غني اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم ألهمنا علما نفقه به أوامرك ونواهيك وارزقنا فهما نعرف به كيف نناجيك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم إننا نسألك فهما النبي وحفظ المرسلين وإلهم الملائكة المقربين في عافية يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم أغننا بالعلم وزينا بالحلم وأكرمنا بالتقوى وجملنا بالعافية يا أرحم الراحمين آمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم إن نستورعك ما قرأناه وما نقرأه في هذا المجلس وما قبله وما بعده فاحفظه علينا حتى ترده إلينا وقت إحتياجنا إليه يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم يا معلم إبراهيم علمنا ويا مفهم سليمان فهمنا ويا مؤتي داود الحكمة آتنا الحكمة وأصلحنا اللهم أكرمنا بنور الفهم وأخرجنا من ظلمات الوهم وافتح لنا أبواب رحمتك وانشر علينا حكمتك يا أرحم الراحمين آمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم يا من مقاليد الأمور أمور كلها بيده وإليه يرجع الأمر كله يا فتاح يا عليم يا فتاح يا عليم يا فتاح يا عليم افتح علينا فتحا قريبا وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي وسدد لساني وهدي قلبي عن كذلك بأحبابي أبدا وارزقنا كمال فتوح العارف والفق في الدين مع كمال إخلاص الكل يقين والعافية وغنى وناصر والحفظ والنفع والانتفاع وخيرة الدارين وعلوم الأولين والآخرين آمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والحمد لله رب العالمين الفاتحة أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم لك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين الحمد لله الحمد لله الحمد لله الحمد لله نعم Uh, Bismillah. We are going to continue. Today we are going to begin a new hurdle, the hurdle, the sixth hurdle, mashallah. Um, and then this us with one more last hurdle, the seventh hurdle. May Allah subhanahu wa taala um, make this easy for us. Inshallah, this this journey to Him easy for us. Let us focus on Him alone and only Him. And then, uh, and may Allah subhanahu wa taala make us of those. Who, uh, uh, who is not distracted by anything else in this dunya that is uh, a 
amongst human beings, amongst relationships, amongst pe- amongst things, amongst I don't know what what else people get in the wrong way. Eh? Um, uh, v- competing and vi- vying for things, uh, co- comparison <laughs> with dunyawi stuff. You know, Subhanallah, Subhanallah, Subhanallah. Um, the whole point of this book, <laughs> the whole point of this book. Is for us to learn to get to Allah Subhanallah From the beginning of the book It's been said From the beginning of the book It's been said The whole point of this book right, Is to teach human beings Because Imam Ghazali saw It was the biggest Big problem in people's lives right? It was a major problem in people's lives Because they were they, they were not getting to Allah right? They were not getting the point of worship Human beings are not getting the point of worship And right? what is the point of worship? To get to Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala What do, what does it mean to get to Allah? Of course not physically I mean physically naam, I mean spiritually You will die and go to Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala Of course that will happen to everybody Right um, But what does it mean to get to Allah? Right? To get to Allah Is to achieve the very You know The, the very precious maqam The very precious um, station Of uh, muraqaba and taqwa And what is muraqaba And what is taqwa? Muraqaba is 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 really to be in a constant companionship with Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. I mean, Subhanallah, that is the meaning of muraqaba, right? To be in a constant companionship with Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. No matter what happens to you in life, no matter where you go in life, no matter no matter what lah, no matter this, like I can't think of a single situation, right, whereby the solution is not. Um, running to your forever companion Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah is your forever and ever and ever companion Subhanallah I can't think of a single problem in life Whereby that is not the solution That I mean can, can, can throw out you know, If any of you can think of any problem in life That the solution is not um, um, running to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every, every, every issue in life That is the one solution Is running to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Which is why if you can learn You can learn this book well Because this book basically you know, It basically tells you What stops you from doing that and what stops you from doing that? Allah teaches us to run to Him, Subhanahu wa Taala, five times a day in our prayers. In all of what we do, not beyond our prayers of, of acts of worship, acts of, of service, acts of obedience to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, He teaches us how to run to Him, Subhanahu wa Taala. But we go through all these, um, all these actions, you know, all these rituals, all these movements as Muslims. And Imam Ghazali says that this is a biggest is a biggest calamity that we just never learn to rely on him, never learn to run to him, never learn to look at him. Right? We just we're just so distracted by everything else, you know. Subhanallah, you know. And and so so this is why, mashallah, we're coming to the sixth hurdle. Already the sixth hurdle, mashallah. You know, check ourselves. Tell us all check ourselves. Where are we with the first five hurdles? We've gone through the first five hurdles. What is if you have not if we missed the first few hurdles? Then it is your your homework eh? and <laughs> at your own time to go back to the um to the lessons on speaker and on the podcast and to go and re list and to listen to the first the first few hurdles. For those of you who have gone through it, then go through it again, again and again and again and again. This book is is like you will say the book, <laughs> you know, Subhanallah. It's the book for life, right? It's, it's, it's like the hack for life. You want to get through life, uh, 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 you want to get through life, inshallah, smoothly. You want to you want to have you know strength like 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 nothing else, you know, Subhanallah. As you go through life, you want to have a fortress built around you. Right, um, as you go through life, and nobody, nobody at all in your in uh, around you, you know, not your family, not your friends, not your colleagues, nobody can perturb the state that you are in because you are in constant attachment, constant awareness, constant companionship. You have reached Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. If you're in that state, then you then this is what we, we speak about when we look at the prophets, we look at the righteous, look at, at the siddiqin, the those who are truthful to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Then no matter what happens around. Them, they are with who? <laughs> they are with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanallah. You know, um, subhanallah. And really, you know, <laughs> can I emphasize enough? Can I emphasize uh, uh, how important this book is? You know, how important this book is because we're living in a world where so many of the problems that, that uh, is just rooted in people not focusing on their creator. Now, why they're created and then focusing on their creator. They're focused on everything else. It's not important. 
uh, in their lives and then it makes them um, it, it pulls them into a rut it pulls them into a into a in, into destruction it pulls them into into Allah knows what and why because Allah calls out to them and they refuse to respond right? Allah call, Allah reaches out to them and they turn away Allah tells them turn to Allah who's always there for you has never dis- never disappointed you and they and they keep turning to the creation right? and then they kept getting disappointed over and over again right, by the creation because they just want to learn the lesson of turning to the creator subhanahu wa ta'ala mashallah but mashallah you know, may Allah reward Imam Ghazali greatly on our behalf for penning down the seven hurdles um, you know, basically he, he he made it into a science you know he just you know, people, he realized that people are getting are confused and mixed up and muddled up as to why they just don't reach Allah, like right? why they don't just they don't they, they keep not running to Allah. Why, right? So he he basically laid it out right for us seven hurdles, there are seven things that says they're stopping you from reaching Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. And today we are coming into the sixth hurdle, the hurdle of the of the qawadih. And the qawadih ada it is called the impairments, but basically the things that spoil everything for you, <laughs> the spoilers. And the impairments you can easier what the spoilers. And they spoil everything, you know. Subhanallah. So again, as a recap, first hurdle was the hurdle of knowledge. You 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 can't you can't get to Allah. And again, as now I mentioned, right that the um the definition of getting to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is that you are in constant muraqaba, meaning you are in constant companionship with Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Which is why getting to Allah is not just precious; it is essential. It's essential if you want to get through this life well. It's essential you learn this. It's essential. Every human being needs to learn this. Otherwise, they're gonna go in circles, and and they're gonna go into in in they're gonna go they're gonna go into you know um they're gonna go up and down, up and down, up and down in their emotions, in their selves, up and down all the time, right? But if they if they're rooted with Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, firm, they're strong, right? Everything also they they will place it next to the they will place it next to, on, on on the scale of day of judgment, right? Does this bring me close to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala or not? They look everything they look at everything in this dunya and they see. The seed of the eye of what it is that Allah has said that and that, that this dunya, this, I mean, in a, in a hadith, if the dunya were to wave Allah subhanahu wa taala, even the weight of the wing of a mosquito, Allah would not give a disbeliever a sip of drink, which means the dunya means nothing to Allah subhanahu wa taala. So why should it mean things to us, you know, uh, when when we don't get it, you know, or when <laughs> Subhanallah, Subhanallah. Focus, okay. Focus, mashallah. The first let the first um hurdle knowledge. Second hurdle repentance. Third hurdle, um what uh basically blocks right. These are the blocks uh to to, to worship, which is four right. Four as uh, Imam Ghazali identifies them, namely dunya, shaitan, people, <laughs> people eh, mashallah, <laughs> dunya, shaitan, people, and the nafs, and then the fourth hurdle, the hurdle of distraction. Right, they don't actually block you, but they distract you. And then um and this and these are four as well, right? Which is uh which is fear, uh which is risk, uh, seeking risk, and then and then and then fear, having worries and fears, and then um interestingly, Mozart identifies that eh? having worries and fears is one of the distractions of his life, um and then uh, uh the decree that Allah has placed in your life, you know, some people they're so distracted by the by the decree that that they are in right now, they don't have certain things or certain things happen to them. You know, whatever it is in the, in the decree for them, they're so distracted by the decree. They're trying to change the decree, but they can't change the decree. Right? And then the last one is um, calamities. Like calamities that they come and they come your way and afflict you. Right? Um, some people they just can't pull themselves out of the calamity. And Imam Ghazali calls these distractions. They are distractions because Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is uh, Allah has written for you already at uh, your um your 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 decree in the subhanallah right? and then uh, Allahumma salli ala sayyidina Muhammad right? then you have the fifth hurdle the hurdle of incentives not not really incentives but it's basically you know driving factors right? so driving factors would be um hope and fear we went through this previously yeah hope and fear what 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 basically gets you up and going uh, because after after knowing how to get to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, knowing to, to repent, to throw off any burden that's on yourself, 
then knowing what's stopping you from worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, knowing what's distracting you from worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, now comes this, now comes the laziness in the self, you know, now comes the heaviness of the nafs, now comes the sloth that is within. You know, um, uh, basically, it's just laziness, right? So, so what pushes a person to get up and go? You know, Subhanallah, um, and that is basically uh, uh, hope and fear. You know, Subhanallah, hope and fear. And mashallah, you know, I was, I was speaking to one of my, um, you know, one of my students this morning, uh, and, and she was just uh, saying a, a few things about about um, about diet. You know, about, about 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 the, you know, about about cleansing and and detoxing and so on. And, and mashallah, you know, we were just speaking and, and I was saying that, you know, in Islam, it's, it's all there in Islam. But think about, you know, uh, our Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy is that because Allah knows our nafs, we're so heavy on things. You know, we're so stubborn on things. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes the wajib, wajib, and then the sunnah, sunnah, right? Because you look at the wajib, what the wajib does is that it prevents you from destroying yourself. Right, if you just keep to the wajib of Islam, you are prevented from destroying yourselves, right? Um, uh, and 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 so you know, so so it's, it's a minimum, the bare minimum that you can that you should be doing in this world uh, is to not destroy yourself. Right? So if you were to, if you just just do the, this is why the wajibs in in Islam they are easy. They're not difficult. They're actually quite easy, mashallah. Inshallah, insha- inshallah, they are easy. Inshallah, they are easy. Then we look at the sunnas, right, um, as, as presented to us by Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, or demonstrated to us by Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The sunnas uh, bring us to excellence. Uh, the sunnas, the sunnas um, uh, bring, uh, brings a human being to the best form the human being can be. Right? So if you just do the wajibs, you're just protecting yourself from what could harm you. Right? But if you go on into the sunnas, and you bring yourself into the highest form that you can ever be. You know, subhanAllah. But Allah knows that, that you know, if, if the sunnas would, were all to be made wajib, how many of us would actually you know, be able to keep up right, with this religion? You know, subhanAllah. So by His mercy, subhanAllah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, He only makes the wajib wajib, and the wajib is very easy. And the sunnas can get really hard on the self. Because I was speaking to her about, you know, about, um, like, about, about cleansing, right? And then already in our religion, the, the wajib when it comes to cleansing, you know, is basically the only thing, the only two things are compulsory when it comes to cleansing, which is fasting in Ramadan, I mean, in, internal cleansing, right? fasting in Ramadan, and then um, eating what is halal. And uh, uh, the wajib is eating what is halal. You're supposed to eat tayyib, right? But, um, yeah, we should, we should eat tayyib. Right? But the, what, what is wajib is halal and fasting in Ramadan. These are the only two things we know about with regards to our dietary um, restrictions as Muslims, right? That's the wajib. That prevents you from hurting yourself. Should be preventing you from hurting yourself, right? So, but then the sunnah, if you follow the sunnah of fasting three days a month, fasting Monday and Thursdays, then not eating um, until you are hungry, and then eating only one third your stomach, and then, you know, eating what is pure from the earth, uh, you know, um, and also it's part of the sunnah to not um, eat f- uh, regularly food that is cooked. But rather food that is raw from the plants, right? like, like dates and, and fruits, lah, fruits, you know, uncooked cooked food that doesn't that's not need cooking. And when we eat cooking cooked food we eat cooked food every day, eh? mashallah. Um basically, you know, you know, all of these things in the sunnah which we know is is it, it can be very hard <laughs> against the nafs. It's not hard to do. It's just hard against the nafs. <laughs> Right, but if you were to do it, you know, you your your physical body and also your spiritual self will reach its best, right? It will reach its best. You know, Subhanallah. And we believe, and I mean, we know the Sunnah is always is the best way a human being can live their lives. Alhamdulillah. Um, okay, naam. So today we are actually in the sixth hurdle, right? The hurdle of the qawadih. Right, it says here impairments, right? But I will say the 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 the, the destroyers, right? The the qawadih, the destroyers. Okay, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Right, so the sixth hurdle, the hurdle of the impairments of the qawadih, he says here, al-qadih al-awwal adamul ikhlas. The first destroyer, right, or the first, yeah, the, the first destroyer is not having sincerity. Not having sincerity. So he says here, ثُمَّ عَلَيْكَ يَا أَخِي And then, you know, on oh my brother, oh my brother, it is on you, may Allah support you. And us, أَيَّدَكَ اللَّهُ وَإِيَّانَ بِحُسْنِ تَوْفِيقِهِ May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala support you and us with the, bel- with the blessing of His en- enabling grace. Amin. Say Amin. Imam Ghazali just made dua for us. Eh? Us, who was reading the book and for himself. Amin. Dua of Imam Ghazali. 
بعد ما استبان لك السبيل واستقام لك المسير بتمييز سعيك وصيانتك وسعيك وصيانته عما يفس اما يفسده ويضيعه عليك وانما لازم كذلك باقامه الاخلاص وذكر المنه لله والاجتناب عن ضده لامرين احدهما لما في فعله من الفائده وهو حسن القبول من الله تعالى وفوز الثواب عليه وإلا فتكون مردودا ذاهب الثواب حكما حكما كلا أو بعضا على ما روي في الحديث المشهور عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم إن الله سبحانه يقول أنا أغنى الأغنياء عن الشرك من عمل عملا فأشرك فيه غيري فنصيبي له فإني فإني لا أقبل إلا ما كان خالصا نعم أي سيمام غزاري هي سيس أي سو أو ماي برادر أو ماي برادر مي الله جيب أس أبليتي As a new ability by his by his tawfiq, by his enabling grace, and by his by by him giving us, um, uh, inspiring in us ways to act on what we have learned in this book. And this is the one book I'll really, really, really emphasize uh, on on myself and on everyone here to really, you know, this is your manual for life. This is your manual for life. You need um uh, apply everything in this book. Really, I'm I'm very serious. Apply everything that you learn in this book. You know, in every knowledge, of course, you should apply it, right? But um, this is Subhanallah. <laughs> this would do it would do it would, would do so much for you. You know, in in just applying this book. So he says here, now that the way is clear to you and the journey lies straight before you to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, your next duty is to separate your virtuous endeavor from everything that corrupts it and causes you to lose it. That can only be achieved by the practice of sincere devotion and gratitude, and by avoiding the opposite thereof for two reasons. Right. So, um, yeah. So, 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 so the first, so, so he he mentions, right, that you sh- you need to seek sincerity with Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, um, uh, so that your actions will not be messed up and it will not be. Uh, it will it will not be spoiled right by having other reasons um as to uh with regards to your worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so the first reason he says that it is the benefit contained in that practice of of, of being sincere to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right and that the benefit is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept from you right? so when you are sincere to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the blessing of acceptance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and attainment of the reward right, is for you Without that accept, acceptance and attainment, you will be rejected and deprived of the reward in whole or in part, as related in the well-known hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, whereby whereby it is said, whereby Allah subhanahu wa taala says, "I am the most independent, and I am the most independent of those who are independent, and of those who are independent of partnership or shirk. That I have, I, know, I need no one next to Allah subhanahu wa taala. If a person does a job or work." And make someone other than me a partner in it, meaning desiring other than me, having intentions of other than me than Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. My share belongs to Him, the partner. For I accept nothing but that which is purely for me. I right? meaning, meaning Allah says, I have Allah has Allah refuses partners. That like Allah refuses partners. If someone does an act saying, Oh, I'm doing it for Allah as well as. I say I'm doing it for Allah, but as well as gaining favor from so and so, right? So they 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 mixed in their intention someone else, right? So I'm doing it for Allah. It's for Allah. It's for Allah. You know how we always do it. You know, say we try and convince ourselves. Eh? It's for Allah. It's for Allah. And then if so and so is not there, and then if so and so said something, and then if so and so, you know, whatever, right? People do things to you, you know, and and then if all these things happen, ah, uh, I'm not doing it anymore. I'm not doing it anymore. You know, give up. I don't want to. You know, were you doing it for for who? <laughs> for Allah or for so and so? Right? Who are you doing it for? You know, Subhanallah. Right? If it was for Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, then it's regardless of anybody on this earth. 
right? Anybody at all on this earth, right? Because Allah is is mawjud. Allah is existent, and Allah does not change. Allah is there all the time. And if it was for Allah, right, it would never change. Right? Your 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 in fact your zeal on it, your enthusiasm on it, right? You would um you know and and, and your istiqama or your or your consistency on it would actually be would actually would, would reflect really how much you're doing it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's it's so it's so sharp, you know, against the heart. <laughs> right? Because, but it's true. It's true. If you're doing it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah never changes. So why is it that, you know, it goes up and down, it's dependent on who comes along, it's dependent on who's there, it's dependent on it's dependent on so many other things that's not Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why our deeds um take a dip and and it, and it, and it goes down, right? Depending on people, because people change. People are then are not there all the time. People, you know, you can't depend on people, you know, subhanahu wa taala or things or whatsoever, right? So the hadith goes that if you were to share in your intention someone else that's not Allah subhanahu wa taala, then Allah gives His share to that person, meaning that you know what, Allah accepts nothing. Okay, Allah accepts nothing. Don't think that you're doing it. You're doing half for Allah and half for so and so. No, if that's, if that's going to happen, then, then the whole thing is for so and so. Like Allah refuses. You know, Allah Allah, Allah rejects it. Uh, he refuses. And he gives it. It's, it's all for so and so. It's not for Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Allah rejects the part that you claim to be from Allah for Allah Subhanahu wa Taala because there should not be any share. Right, for for anyone else besides Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and and Al Habib Omar he will say, and 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 who is there that you can place next to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala? Right, who is there? You know, wala wala ghair dalik. Right, it's not there should not be anything other than Allah than seeking seeking Allah's pleasure. There should not be anything other than wanting to get close to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Don't think you're gonna go into something you want to get close to so and so, or you want to be so and so. Or you want to, you know, uh, whatever. La hawla wa la quwata illa billah. Allah, Allah. Right? You want to get close to Allah. You want to be with Allah. You want to um, rely on Allah. You want to remember Allah. You want to learn to only run to Allah. You want to, subhanallah. Right? This is, this, is, this is the secret of sincerity. Sincerity is, is a treasure of the treasures. If you can really learn to train yourself on sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it's a high it's a high station it's a very high station and may Allah make us the mukhlaseen al-muhibbeen al-faizeen um, the, of those who are sincere those who are beloved those who are uh, those who are successful right, in this in this world and in the hereafter okay naam I so I hope you understood, you understood the hadith eh? right, what, what the had, uh, because the hadith can be a bit um, confusing right, if, you, if, you, if you don't if you're not clear in, in what in in what how it's being phrased, right? So I hope you'll understand the hadith that's being shared here. So Allah does not accept anything except what is um. So I'll say for nasibi lahu. Right? I'm gonna reject whatever they say is for me. No, there is no partner if Allah subhanahu wa taala no sharing. Naam. Right? Then he says waqil inna Allah taala yaqul abdihi yom al qiyamati idha tamas thawab amalihi. ألم يوسع ألم ألم يوسع لك في المجالس ألم تك ألم تكون الم مرا م م مراسة في الدنيا ألم يرخص بيعك وشراءك ألم تكر ألم تكرم هذا وأشباهه من الخطر والضر والضرر من الخطر والضرر نعم right, so he says here and, and then it is reported also on the day of judgment right that um Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say to his servant uh, when he seeks a reward for his work that means what he has done in this in this in his dunya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say to him were, were, were you not given space at the meetings were you not the head of the pack in the world? Did you not profit from your buying and your selling? Were you not treated with honor? I mean, so much of it, you know, Allah's, it is from Allah subhanahu. And so much of it is done for something else, right? So, so much of it was done for something else. Meaning, when, when it said to the person, were you not giving, given space at the meetings? Right? Meaning that, you know, weren't you seeking position? Right? Weren't you seeking when when you come to Allah on day of judgment, you say, "Ya Allah, I did this and I did that. Ya Allah, I did this and I did that." Then Allah will say to him, "You know, you you, you did this, so you be given a space. You want to you want to be in on the crowd. 
you want to be in on the group, right? And you did it. You did it for that reason, not for Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. It mattered to you how people saw you, right? And then Allah, and if we uh, say to the person, were you not the head of the pack in the world? Right? Weren't you seeking? Um, weren't you seeking uh, a leadership? Weren't you seeking position? I right? weren't you. You were not seeking Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. And then they will say, Yeah Allah, you know, I I bought and I sold uh, for your sake, Yeah Allah. I did all this for your sake, Yeah Allah. And Allah will say, Do you not profit for your buying and selling? I right? weren't you seeking the money that was in there? I right? weren't you looking at the price all the time? I right? ordered the, the amount that came your way. I right? weren't you pleased with the money that came into your hands? Right? And then um, the person will will say, will claim and say. Ya Allah, you know, you know, I did, I gave all of this, you know, in, in, in your way. I did this work in your way. I did all this volunteerism in your way, Ya Allah. And Allah only knows, only Allah knows the sincerity and the, in the insincerity of His servants. And you'll be said to the person, were you not treated with honor? Right? Weren't you pleased when they stood up for you? Right? When they would say your name in honor? Right? When people looked up to you and they, and they, and they admired you? Right? Weren't you pleased with all of that? You know, it's, it's so scary, subhanAllah. It's so scary. Right, the, the, all these hadith on the day of judgment, right, when things become, become so, become exposed, and then, and then you know uh, really how much of this, of the work that you have done in this world, was it really for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and how much it was for your own name, and for your own nafs, and for your own self, and for your own stomachs, and for your own bodies, and for your own rest, and for your own luxuries, right, and for your own, uh, for your own, for your, for, for your own, um, uh, joys by being with people and, and not caring about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at all. Wala hawla wa la quwata illa billah. It's all very sharp. This book, this book is, a, in case you have not noticed by, until now, eh, right, is, is very, very, is a very sharp in your face um, text. Imam Ghazali does not hold anything back. Right? He just says things you know, to us, you know, subhanallah. Right, so, subhanallah. Right, subhanallah. This is the, this is right, this is the, this is the, the hurdle of, of the destructions. Right, of what of the destroyers, the destroyers of all the actions. So it could be that someone is is doing so much um work, acts of worship, but none of it was for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It was all just it was all just for the people. The people, the people, the people. Wala hawla wala quwata illa billah. Right, and this is this is, this is a long hadith in Bidatul Hidayah. What happened to the page? <laughs> There's a long hadith. Right, in Bidal Hidayah about um, sincerity and about how deeds are, um, are, are rejected or accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let me see if I can get the, 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 the page. Eh? It's a long hadith in Bidal Hidayah about um, showing off. Inshallah. Allahumma salli ala sallallahu Muhammad. There, okay, the narration of Sayyidina Mu'az bin Jabal. Let me just read it out uh, very quickly. So you can find this in Bidul Hidayah under the sins of the heart, right? And um, on the authority of, even Mubarak narrates with his chain of transmission, on the authority of a man who said to Mu'az bin Jabal, he said, O oh Mu'az, tell me a hadith you heard from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The man said, Mu'az radiyallahu ta'ala anhu wept until I thought he would not stop and then became quiet. He then said, I heard the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say, O Mu'az, I will tell you a hadith that if you uphold it, it will benefit you. But if you neglect it, you will have no excuse before Allah on the day of judgment. Ready to hear the first part of the verse SubhanAllah. So then he says, Allah alayhi wa sallam, he said, O Mu'az, verily Allah created seven angels before creating the heavens and the earth. Then he created the heavens and he ordained one angel to be the gatekeeper of each of the seven heavens. Mm -hmm. The recording angels ascend to the heavens with a servant's deeds that have been recorded that day, that particular day. From the time he wakes up in the morning until the time he sleeps in the evening. And these good deeds possess a light like, possess a light like that of the sun. When the angels reach the lowest heaven, they anoint and magnify the deeds. The gatekeeper, the gatekeeper angel responds, Strike with these acts the face of the one who did them. 
for I am the overseer of backbiting. My Lord has ordered me to not allow the deeds of anyone guilty of backbiting to get past my gate to those above. This is just the first gate already. Your heart, already your heart uh, <laughs> trembling. The first gate, I throw back the deeds on these people, throw back the deeds of those who backbite. And then he, sallallahu alayhi wa continued, Then the recording angels ascend with another slave's good deeds, anointing it and magnifying them, this time making it, in, making it to the second level of heaven, meaning passing the first le- level because the person was not a backbiter. Right? So for those who are not backbiters, then their deeds continue to go up the second level. Right? Then the gatekeeper of the second level of heaven say, Stop! Strike with this work the face of the one who did it. I am the angel who checks for pride. Right, there's pride in there. I am the angel who st- I am the angel who checks for pride. Verily, he sought by his works a transient aspect of the world. My Lord has ordered me to not let his deed go get past me. For verily, he used to have pride towards those whose company he set. Right, so okay, so if the person has no backbiting and has no pride, then the, the deeds continue moving up. Then he said, Allah some continued. The recording angels bring another slave's deeds, glowing. And because one has no pride and has no backbiting. Eh? Glowing with lights from charity, fasting and prayer. Deeds that truly impress the recording angels. Like they were the ones who wrote down the, the deeds and they are very ple- impressed by the deeds. They, they don't know the inner secrets of the deeds. They succeed in passing the first two levels of heaven, carrying the deed to the third, to the third level. The gatekeeper says to them, Stop! Strike with this work the face of the one who did it. I am the angel that monitors arrogance. My Lord has commanded me to not allow his deeds to get past me, for verily he used to be arrogant towards those others in their gatherings. Right, so if the deeds are all free of these three things, they continue. Eh? So he continues, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the recording angel said these of another slave. Glowing like a shining star, resounding in the glorification of Allah, prayer, fasting, and the Hajj and Umrah. The angels carry them up until they reach the fourth level. The gatekeeper says to them, Stop, strike, and reject. Strike with these deeds of face, back, and belly of the ones who did them. I am the watcher over conceit. It means hatred. I, I am the watcher over conceit. My Lord has ordered me to not allow his deeds to get past me. When he used to do his deed, conceit would enter into it. You know, he would, um, uh, he says, and not cons- uh, it is like um, self, being amazed by the self, and uh, to be amazed by the self. I uh, so to reject it again. And then he said, and then he said, okay, you want to zoom in, Nabila? And then, and then he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the recording angels ascend with the deeds of another, means having passed all of this first uh, uh, all of this uh, first first four uh, four idea. Yeah? Right? All of this first three. So three. The first one is uh, backbiting, second one is um, pride, third one is arrogance, fourth one is cons- being conceited or being just being just self pleased, you know, just this. And then now onto the fifth one. And then the recording angels uh, ascend the deeds of another, escorting them like a bride, like a bride to her groom. It means beautified, until they reach the fifth level of heaven. The gatekeeper tells them, "Stop! Strike with these deeds at the face of the ones and the back of the ones who did them, and place them on his shoulder." It means rejected. I am the monitor of envy. I am the monitor of envy. Indeed, he used to envy people who would study and do deeds and do deeds similar to his. It means jealousy, eh? as well as every person who would excel in acts of worship. He used to envy them. He would envy, meaning he would speak ill of them. He would envy and speak ill of them. My Lord commands me to prevent his actions from getting past me to higher levels. And then Rasulullah Sallallahu said, the recording angels will take the of another person consisting of prayer and fasting and zakat and hajj and umrah and they'll make it to the sixth level where the gatekeeper will say, stop, rejected are these deeds, strike with, the, with, with these deeds the face of those who did them. He would never show mercy to this person, the person who did these deeds. 
He would never show mercy to a single one of Allah's servants who was afflicted with misfortune and calamity. All he cared was his worship and didn't care about anybody else in their misfortune and calamity. Rather, he would gloat over their hardships. I am the angel of mercy. Allah has ordered me not to allow his deeds to get past me. Then he sallallahu alayhi wa continued, The recording angels take the deeds of another slave consisting of prayer, fasting, spending in wealth, jihad and scrupulousness. In zuhud, the, de- the, the deeds hum like a bee and shine in the brightness of the sun, escorting the deeds of 3,000 angels. Because it was done so beautifully with no arrogance, with no conceit, with no backbiting, with no pride, right? with no um, uh, uh, envy. With no, um, with, 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 with full of mercy, right? all of this was done. This, this was done with, with all of these treats, and so they were, they were escorting these deeds. Were three thousand angels? They reached the gate of the seventh heaven. One more, one more, seventh heaven, and the gatekeeper says, "Stop, strike with these deeds the face of the one who did them. Strike his limbs with them and lock his heart." Verily, I keep from my Lord all those deeds that were not done for his sake. Indeed, he sought by his actions other than Allah, most high, most mighty, most majestic. He desired esteem amongst the religious jurists he did, and to be mentioned by the scholars and to be famous in the cities. My Lord has ordered me to not allow his deeds past me. Any acts not done purely for the sake of Allah alone is just done for show. Allah does not accept the deeds of people who show off. And he, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, said, The recording angels take the deeds, the deeds of another person, prayer, almsgiving, fasting, hajj, and umrah, good character, observance of silence, the remembrance of Allah Most High. The angels of the heavens escort it forward until it breaks through all the seven levels, all the barriers and the veils to Allah, might, mighty and majestic. They stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and bear witness to these righteous deeds done sincerely for His sake. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, you record the deeds of my servant, and I observe what is in his heart. Verily, he did not seek me by, my, by, by this deed. He desired other than me, so my curse is upon him. And the angels will say, Upon him is your curse and ours and the seven heavens. And those, are in, and, and, and those, and, and those who are in them curse him. Mu'ad radiallahu anhu said, Ya Rasulullah, you are, you are Rasulullah and I am Mu'az. <laughs> Alhamdulillah for saying I'm Mu'az. Eh? He asked what, 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 what all of us are thinking. <laughs> he asked the, the one question we, we all, we're all thinking. <laughs> fail, uh, confirm fail. Confirm fail. Like, like <laughs> how are we going to pass this? So hard. <laughs> so, ya Rasulullah. Anta Rasulullah wa ana Mu'az. I'm just Mu'az. How can I uh, find escape and salvation from this? And he said, Allah alayhi wa sallam replied, follow me. Follow me, Mu'az. Even if there is a deficiency in your deeds, restrain your tongue from speaking ill of your brothers who have memorized the Qur'an. Take responsibility for your sins. Do not blame your sins on others, on them. Do not deem yourself innocent by finding fault in them. Do not elevate yourself above them. Do not introduce work done for the sake of this life into your work done for the next life. Do not be arrogant when you sit with others so that they avoid you because of your bad character. Do not whisper to someone while someone else is present. Do not be haughty to people for this can cut you off from the good of this life and the next do not tear people to pieces with your tongue so that on the day of resurrection the dogs of hell will tear you to pieces in the fire. Allah Most High says, Subhanahu wa ta'ala, by those who draw forth. Do you know what these are, O Mu'ath? You know what are these, O Mu'ath? And I said, My father and my mother be your ransom, Ya Rasulullah. What are they? And he said, they are the dogs of hell. 
that draw the flesh from the bones. I said, my mother, my, fa- my father, my, ma- my, my, my father, my mother, be your ransom, Ya Rasulullah. Who is capable of overcoming these vile characteristics and being saved from them? And he وسلم, said, Mu'az, truly it is easy for the one for whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it easy. And he said, the narrator of this hadith said, I never saw anyone who used to recite more Quran than Mu'az on account of this hadith. MashaAllah. This is the one of the very, very, uh, you see this is the hadith that, that instills fear. Uh, we just went through the chapter on fear and hope. This is the hadith of fear. Uh, it's a hadith that, 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 the hadith that really put in so much hope in our, in our hearts. And there are hadith that put in so much fear in our hearts. You know, subhanAllah, the, the, the statement of Sayyidina Mu'az. You are Rasulullah and I am Mu'az. Like, 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 how? How do we pass? You know, subhanAllah. Right, and what was his answer? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what was his answer? Right, he pointed us to good character. He pointed us to just following him, follow his way, follow his sunnah. And then, and then, and then, and then you know, be humble. Be humble to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Admit your mistakes. You know, uh, uh, don't hurt people. Right, be humble uh, in yourselves. You know, subhanallah. Okay, go back to our book. InshaAllah. Allahumma uh, sadi ala sadina Muhammad. Okay, that was the first one. Like, I want to do it. Um, uh, nah, that was the first one that we, that we took from the from this chapter about ikhlas. And he will go on into the next one, um, which... Nah, right. uh, he will go on to the next one, inshallah, next lesson, inshallah. <laughs> so for today, we'll, end, we'll stop here. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Are there any, um, any questions? Anyone has a question? Inshallah, I'll be going through the hadith. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't do a sharah of the, had, the long hadith. I just read it. Um, the sharah or the explanation of the long hadith that's in Bidatul Hidayah in Mughazali's other book. Um, I will be doing it during my Bidatul Hidayah classes. Right, so inshallah, uh, when we get there, I will. When we get there, lah. <laughs> I don't know when, right, But inshallah, when we get there, we get there, lah. Uh, when we get there, I will do a sharah of the hadith, inshallah. But for now, um, just to hear the the words of the hadith, just the words ready is enough to to shake us into reality, inshallah. Barakallahu fikum. Wassalamu ala sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. So again, this hadith, they're not, they're not there to put you to push you into despair right don't don't lose sight of why the hadith are there rasulullah SAW is the last person to push people into despair right so this hadith are not there to, to push you into despair but they are there for you to be wary and careful and that's the point of the hadith right for you to learn to be wary to be careful to be vigilant right? and to keep trying and trying over and over again and that's the point of the hadith eh? ربنا فعنا بما علمتنا ربي علمنا الذي ينفعنا ربي فقهنا وفقه أهلنا وقرابات لنا في ديننا مع أهل الكتر أنت وذك ربي وفقنا فقم لما ترتدي قولا وفعلا كرما ورزق كل حلالا دائما وخل أتقي العلماء نحظى بالخير ونكفى كل شر ربنا واصلح لنا كل شؤون وأقرب الرضا منك العيون وقضي عنا ربنا كل الدين قبل أن تأتينا الرسل من وقف الوسل أنت أكرم من ستر وصلاة الله تغشى مصطفى من إلى الحق دعانا والوفى بكتاب فيه, للناس فيه للناس شفاء وعلى الأهل الكرام الشرفاء وعلى الصاحب الصابح الغر اللهم اهدنا بهداك وجعلنا من يسارع في رضاك وتولينا وليا زواك وتجعلنا من خلف الأمر وعلى سبق وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والحمد لله رب العالمين في كل لحظة أبدا أدى خلقه ورضا ونفس زنة عرش من الكلمات يا ربنا اعترفنا بأن نقترفنا وأننا أسرفنا على لظى أشرفنا فاتب علينا توبة تغسل لكل حوبة واستر لنا العورات وأمين روعات واغفر لوالدينا ربي ومولدينا والأهل والإخوان وسائر الخلان وكل ذي ما حب أو جيرة أو صحبة والمسلمين أجمع آمين يا ربي اسمع فضلا وجود منا 
la biktisabi minna ay Mustafa Rasuli nahaza bi kulli suli bi Mustafa Rasuli nahaza bi kulli suli bi Mustafa Rasuli nahaza bi kulli suli salla wa sallam rabbi alayhi adda al-habbi wa alihi wa sahbi idara tashri sahbi walhamdulil ilahi بالبدئ والتناهي حمدا كثيرا دائم محبة النسائم والحمد لله رب العالمين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر الفاتحة أن الله يرزقنا العلم النافع والعمل الخازم المقبول وحسن التعليم ودلالة على الهدى ويسر في قلب النبي محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم وإلى أرواح معلمنا وشيخنا وزبي الحقوق علينا وإلى حضرة النبي محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم الفاتحة